Hey, welcome to this new section. Now, I assume you know how to use variables, how to write functions, and you can tell the difference between different data types in Python. So you should know these things. And if you're not yet confident about those basic concepts, nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll use them over and over again as you build the 10 applications along the course. They are the fundamental blocks of the language, so uh, you need that for every program that you'll write. And we'll be using these fundamentals a lot throughout the course. And now we start shifting a bit towards more practical things, and specifically, in this section you will learn how to handle files with Python. So far we worked only with numbers and text and, you know, native objects in Python. In this section we will interact with files. So, consider Python as a normal program, such as a Notepad editor or even Atom, let's say Notepad, an editor. So, Notepad can open text files and it can also write content in them. And Python can do the same, except you need to use code in the case of Python. So you need to write Python code to open a text file with Python, for instance, or other kinds of files. And you use Python code to grab the text of the text file. And you also do the same if you want to add text to that file. So read and write. And the process is very easy. You just need to practice it a little bit. So you need to practice the commands that do this file handling. And I'll be showing you all the necessary commands throughout the next lectures. These are building functions. So uh, no need for third-party Python libraries. And yeah, that's just about the introduction. Uh, let's get our hands dirty with code now. So see you in the next lectures. Great, in this lecture you're going to learn how to open a file with Python and how to read the file content so that you can manipulate that content there in Python later on. For instance, you may need some data, you may need to read some data out of a file. Let's say that would be a file where you have weather observation data and you want to open that with Python, and then you want to send an email with Python to, uh, let's say, your email address uh, automatically. So Python needs to read the, the content of that file as a string, and then it sends that string as an email to your email address. So that was just a random example. If you are an experienced programmer, you may find it easy to wrap your mind around how to use file handling techniques, so about real-world scenarios. If you're not a programmer, we'll be using file handling techniques in real-world examples, so in the application that we'll be building. Nothing to worry about. So let's look at the syntax then. Um, Python can be used to handle both uh, binary and text files. Text files are files uh, with a txt extension, such as this one here. So example.txt. And you can open such files uh, with editors such as Atom. And we also have binary files such as this DLL file in here, uh, which you cannot read with uh, an editor, as you can see. But mostly you'll find yourself working with text files. So here is a simple text file. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'd like to read these three lines in Python and print them out on the Python shell. So printing is crucial when you want to test things out. Uh, let's say we're about to write a program, as I said, that sends an email. But first of all, you want to take things step by step. So you want to make sure that you're reading this file correctly with Python. And to make sure that you're reading that correctly, you want to print them out. You want to print the output in the shell. Once you see that the printing is working correctly, then you go to the next step and instead of printing uh, out that string, you, you take the string and pass it to your uh, function that uh, produces that sense email. So it's good to do things one at a time. And now I can either go ahead and create a Python file while I write the code to read this file, or I can use the interactive shell. For the sake of this demonstration, I'll prefer to use the interactive shell. So that will allow me to show you the intermediate results. Uh, I, so I write a line of code and I show you something and then I write the other line and so on. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead. And one thing, Terminal Plus, which is the Atom plugin that allows me to access a command line from within Atom, 
is having a bug and uh, I cannot install it at the moment which is not a problem at all because I can use the uh, Windows command uh, line so shift right click and open command window here and that will open the command line in the current directory which is uh, this one here so Dropbox PP files uh, here is where I have the example.txt file that I'll be working on. And yep, Terminal Plus is good because you have everything in one window. And it's especially good for me uh, to make this video so that I have things organized. But using the terminal of your computer is essentially the same thing. So to read the content of a file with Python, uh, you first need to open that file using the open method and then you want to read the file content using the read method. So first of all you want to create a variable, let's say file, and then you use the open method, which is a built-in method, and then you point to the file that you want to open. And there is one more argument there you need to pass to the open method. So the first argument is the file input, and then you need to pass the mode that you want to open that file. And R means read. So the most important modes are R and W. R is read and W is write. So let's focus on R now. If you execute that, uh, you'll get an error. Why? Because I haven't opened Python yet. And yeah, sorry about that. Uh, let me uh, write that again. So I was writing code in the command line. and R. Execute and uh, that was successful. As long as you don't get an error that is successful. So what is file? Uh, if you check what file is, you'll see that it's a text IO wrapper or you can call it an, a file object. So what we did is we imported that file in Python by creating a special object in Python. And remember I told you that uh, Python opens files as other programs do. So if you try now to delete example.txt, you'll get a message that the action can be completed because the file is open in Python. So once you have opened that file, you may want to read it and to read the content of the file. And it's wise to save the content in a variable. So I'm calling this variable content. Uh, then I'll point to the file object, which is saved in the file variable, and then to the read method. Just like that and execute. Nothing happens, so that was successful. And now if you print content, you'll get the text of the file, uh, which is actually a plain Python string. Sometimes though, you may want to save the lines in a list. So instead of uh, uh, using read, you want to re uh, use read lines. And if you print content now, you'll get an empty list. Which I'm sure it's not what you were expecting. Probably what you were expecting was a list with three items. So line 1 and line 2 and line 3. The reason we didn't get that is that, uh, you know, when you apply the read method, before applying the read method, uh, there's a concept called the pointer. So uh, before applying here the read method, the pointer is before the first character of the text file. So just here. And uh, when you apply the read method, what Python does is it reads everything that is from that pointer and down. And so when the read method finishes, so after the read method, the pointer has gone at this point. So the pointer uh, is here, read method takes it here. And at that point, when you apply another read method or, or even read lines, as we did here, a Python is trying to read everything that is from this pointer and down. And there's nothing under this point, so that's why we got this empty list. The solution to that is to apply a seek method there uh, with an argument of zero. So what that will do, it will place a pointer back at the zero position of the text file. So if you execute that, 
you get a message from Python which you don't need. Uh, then if you apply again uh, read lines and then print content this time you'll get a list of three elements so line one line two line three that's what the seek method does and I know at this point it's hard to imagine why do you use the seek method but in uh, one of our applications uh, where we're blocking website destructing websites in, uh, in our browser so that we cannot access the, those websites which uh, is good for productivity uh, in that application we'll be using the seek method uh, there you'll understand how that comes into play so it's it's actually very useful in certain scenarios it really gives you lots of control over the files and uh, yeah back to this list uh, you see this backslash and characters there so one here uh, and another here and yet a third one here and backslash n in Python means a new line. So uh, we have here line one, but then when I created this text file, I did it like I wrote line one and then I pressed enter. So in other words, enter is the backslash n. And that is useful when you want to write content in a text file. So we'll be using backslash n uh, later in the next lectures to write content in different, in separate lines in a text file. And to get rid of those characters, to end up with a clean list with line 1, line 2, line 3. Mm, uh, there may be different uh, workarounds there, but uh, what I'm thinking of is uh, list comprehension. So all our existing list is content, and you can either create a new list, let's say content1, a new variable to store the new list, the clean list, or you can update your existing variables by passing content there, and that would be equal to uh, a new list, so now you want to create this new list on the fly uh, using a list comprehension. Uh, so that would be our strip, uh, which is a method that removes some characters from a string. And in this case, we would want to remove backslash n. So, so i there is a temporary variable of the list comprehension expression. And you want to say for i in content. So we are applying the rstrip method to the i variable, where i is the item of the content list. So what this will do, it will go through the first string and it will strip out the uh, backslash n from that first string and then it will store it as a uh, first item of the new list and then it will go to the second line and it will do the same until the list is consumed. So execute that and content and now we have a clean list yeah. and yeah that's what you should know about opening and reading text out of text files with python but that's one last crucial thing you should know uh, you know we still have this file open in python now, in this particular case we're opening that file in read mode but if you're writing something in that file and then you close your terminal without closing the file those changes would not be saved in the file so you should always apply the close method to your file object, just like that. And now you can go ahead and delete the file if you like. So that was successful. Again, your variables uh, are still there. So once you read the content of the file and you store that in a variable, then you can reuse your variables as many times as you want. And yeah, that's about opening and reading files with Python. In the next lecture we'll go ahead and write content in the file. So I'll see you there. Okay, now we know how to open and read content out of a text file. And in this lecture we'll go ahead and learn how to write content inside a file, a text file. So we're still working with text files. Uh, later we'll be using the same methods but applying those to binary files. So I'll go ahead and shift right click here and open command window here so that I have a command line open in this current directory. Therefore that allows me to pass relative paths when I work with Python, uh, which is like uh, directly example.txt. Uh, so if you open your command line from here, for instance, as you know, for from C, 
I would want to pass full paths, which would be something like D and colon and then backslash Dropbox, backslash PP files, backslash example.txt, if you run Python from here. For convenience, uh, it's good to open uh, the directory f in the current directory, in your working directory. And mine is here, pp backslash files. And yeah, mm, here's the command line. I'll now go ahead and trigger a Python interactive session there. And I'll go ahead and create a file with Python. Again, luckily the syntax is the same almost. So you use a p open method and store the file that you'll be creating in a variable. Let's call this file, uh, so let's name it example.txt. And this time you don't want to pass R, you want to pass W, which stands for write. You execute that, and immediately you get this example.txt file, uh, which for now it's an empty file. So the open method, what it does is, it doesn't only open an existing file, it also creates a file where that, where that file doesn't exist. So in this case, if this example.txt file was already in our working directory, what Python would do, it would open that file, and that file would be ready to, to write content inside it. When that file is not there, Python will create it. So now we can go ahead and say file.write. We don't use read, we use write in this time. And there you pass the string that you want to write in there. Let's say line one. You execute. And you get some return there, which is not very important, but uh, for your curiosity, uh, six means you wrote six characters to your file. And now probably you're wondering and looking at this example.txt file, which is still empty. So it doesn't have the line one string written inside. Uh, the reason to that is uh, this example.txt file is still open inside Python. And every change that you're making inside Python, it only exists inside the Python program. So you haven't yet saved the changes to your example.txt file. And that means when you open it with another program, such as Atom, you still get the old file. And if you also try to uh, delete this uh, file, you'll not be able to do so because that is open in Python. So um, to write the changes in there, you want to use the close method. Close. And now if you go to Atom, you'll see a line one in the example.txt file. And that's how to write content inside a file. Now, something important that you should know is if you want to add an, a second line to this example.txt file, uh, you probably would do, uh, you'd open the file, so file open uh, example.txt in your write mode, and then you'd probably add line 2 in there, and then probably close the file. But what you get is uh, line 2 only. The reason to that is uh, the W method is not an append method. So for adding more lines to your existing text file, you'd want to use the append method, which you'll learn in the next lecture. So write method, uh, what it does is it actually creates an empty file, and then it allows you to write uh, uh, everything that you want inside that empty file. That said, it's still possible to add multiple lines using the write method but you will have to do that in one session. So that means uh, you open, you create your uh, text file, and then say uh, file write uh, line one, and then file write line two, and then close the file. And what you get is this text. So you get both line one and two, uh, but that's probably not what you expected exactly. Uh, what you're expecting is probably uh, line one in a separate line and line two under that. So to do that, remember that we had this backslash and special character. 
that will allow you to create a new line just after line 1. And then when you write line 2 and then close the file, you'll get a text file with two separate lines. However, if you had to write a long list of lines there, let's say you have 20 lines, you want to write it and executing the right method 20 times wouldn't be very efficient. So what you could do is use a for loop to write all the lines using one single write method inside the loop. So normally you'd have a list or any other object. You may have an Excel file or CSV file with lines. And let's say you have three, three items in there. Line one, line two, line three. And if you want to write these three lines in your example a txt file, you'd want to iterate. Let's say for item in uh, L, which is the list, file.write. Item here would be, uh, in the first iteration, item would be line one, and then line two, line three. So you want to write item, and maybe it's a good idea to use backslash n. So after line one, you want to create a new line and then write a line two after that. So item plus backslash n. And yeah, that should do it. And nope, that didn't do it because Python cannot operate on a closed file. So this file variable is actually a closed file object now. And you want to open that uh, first. Because you know we closed it here and therefore you need to apply the open method again. So again file and open, uh, you open that file and then go ahead and say for item in L and we do this. Execute. That was successful but you still don't see the changes in your uh, txt file because you need to close the file. And yeah. A line 1, line 2, line 3. That worked perfectly. So if you get this error another time, you know that you first need to open a file in Python, then you want, then you apply uh, write or read methods to that file. So that's about the write mode. In the next lecture, we'll go ahead and append some more lines to this existing text file. So I'll see you there. Alright, very quickly now, let's go ahead and add some lines in this example.txt file. And that process is called appending. Again, you want to use the open method. And again, you may point to an existing file, or if that file doesn't exist, it will be created. And the argument you want to pass now is A. So that stands for appending. As you can observe now, in contrast to the previous lecture, our text file was emptied, but in this case, we still have these three existing lines there. Again, you use the right method to add anything in there, line 4, or whatever, and normally the changes haven't yet been reflected in the Atom editor, so you want to close that, and now you see line 4 added in there. And yeah, that was what I wanted to show you in this lecture, and yeah, I'll see you later. Alright, now you should have a good understanding of the main methods of file handling in Python. And so I have a list of all the other modes here that you can use for file handling and so we did R and W and A. Now you also have these combinations, so for instance R, R plus, uh, what this should do is it opens a file both for reading and writing. Uh, because you know with R you can only read and with W you can only write. So this allows you to um, open for both reading and writing. And so, this also, uh, W+, plus, it also opens a file both for reading and writing. So, uh, we're talking about uh, reading and writing in the same session. So, you open a file, and before you close it, you can apply the, uh, a write method between these two expressions, and a uh, read method as well. Now, the difference between uh, R+, plus and, R and W+, plus is that with uh, W+, plus, uh, it will override your existing file, but with R+, plus, it doesn't override the existing file, but it places a pointer at the beginning of the file. And then if you write something, then you'll write uh, that text above the existing text. And we'll be using this in one of our uh, applications here. You see how this comes in handy. And lastly, we have A+. Plus. 
and this will place your pointer at the end of the file so like in here if you were reading this and then you can append things under that so this makes sure that, uh, that you have all the possible combinations there so that you can manipulate and adjust what you want to do what you want to accomplish uh, in working with your files so spend a few minutes trying this out and if you don't understand anything just drop a question and yeah we have one more lecture to go so see you there hey welcome again uh, this will be a very short lecture and uh, what you're going to learn now is how to use the with statement now what with statement does is uh, it lets you write cleaner code uh, when handling files with python so that's one thing and the second thing is uh, the with statement uh, makes sure that the file is closed uh, without you having to write a close method explicitly and yeah this is what i mean so everything starts with with and then you use the same method so open to open a file and you say example.txt and let me use a method maybe append plus for reading and appending and you say as file uh, so you create a, a variable on the fly and notice the column there which underlies that you need to indent the code all under that so Every time you have a colon in Python, uh, everything that goes after the colon is indented. And these lines now are part of the with statement block. So we're talking about, about a block of code in here. And then you do the same thing as you do with a normal file handling. Except of when you uh, finish this block, you don't have to close the file. So uh, what we could do is, you know, with the uh, A plus method, when you open a file with A plus method and then you want to read that file, the pointer will, will be at this point currently. So if you read now, you will read an empty string. So what you could do first is maybe file seek and zero there. And that will place a pointer at the first line uh, just there. Okay, and execute that. And then you could do content equals to file does read. And what that will do, it will create a variable named content. And then you can reuse that variable uh, inside the with statement or outside of it. So the variable stays there. And then maybe write something there. All right. Mm, probably we need a break line there and uh, then line uh, six yeah six execute execute again and you're done as you can see i didn't have to close the file the changes will be written in the file once the block of code ends so the syntax is similar to when you write a for loop uh, with this indentation in here and our content you see that you have these lines there And also, uh, if you open example.txt again, you see that line 6 is there. And yeah, that's about the with statement. In rare scenarios, you will still want to use a file that close, especially if you have a long code to write. So if you want to open a file in the beginning, and then you, you do a lot of work with that file. So maybe you are really interested to, to keep the file open. But for quicker writing and reading, uh, use the with statement because that will make your code look cleaner. And yeah, that closes this lecture and I hope you learn from it. And I hope you're enjoying the course and uh, please leave a review if you're feeling like so. I would appreciate that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next lecture then. Uh, we have more to go, uh, still a lot of uh, things to learn. I'll talk to you later.